Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Chrono Clock. If you missed the last episode, you can click on the end of the video to watch previous episodes get caught up. It was about a 10 minute ride, so we continued the conversation as we stood on the train. I don't know Mew very well at all. In fact, I only just met her yesterday, so I still don't really know what she's like. I leaned my weight against the handlebar as I spoke. I can't tell you. It's not that I don't want to, but I have a good reason why I can't. Oh, okay. Whew, that was easy. My sister was quick to place her trust in my words. That part I know. Accepting her poverty at home, I had already known those things beforehand. But I'm the prince that must make her Cinderella. She doesn't need, seem to have a wicked stepmother and elder sisters to bully her though. And since Machiru didn't mention how she skipped grades, I guess she didn't know about that either. I'd like to know more about her social anxiety myself. I'm actually trying to help her overcome that, so I was just wondering if you have any ideas about how to help her open up a little more. Huh? Machiru gave me a gentle laugh. Okay, it doesn't help. Hey, I'm not trying to make her into a completely different person. She just wants to help. She just wants some help with her social anxiety. I concur. Machiru stopped and thought about something for a moment. あ、おうだべ。彼氏ができた時です。大体は自分に自信がついて明るくなります。あ。意外ウッド Given Mew's circumstances, the idea of her getting a boyfriend in order to work up enough courage to confess to Shuji was pretty much a cart before the horse kind of idea. Wait, on second thought, she might be onto something there. While suddenly collecting my thoughts, momentarily, Machiri grinned and cocked her head to one side. No? Huh? Are you trying to make a move on me and yet you ask me that? Oh, ye of little faith in your own brother. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, this is a weird, weird family thing. Um, I feel like I painted myself into a corner. Given Machiru's maturation over the past year or two and how often she expressed her affection for me, one could say I felt a sort of ambivalence toward her. Aren't we getting off topic here? No? Why must you destroy my intentions so? She displayed a smile more brilliant than my, the purest white. It was one that belied how she truly felt. Well, just don't tell Mew I asked you about her. She nodded respectfully, and that was the end of the conversation. Good grief. This was one hell of a conversation to have at this hour of morning. Well, I mean, you know, if she stays, you know, in our bed every morning, then I mean, I don't know. Even so, I felt that there was some value to asking another girl's opinion on the matter. Falling in love spurs on changes for a girl. 
For Mew, the changes have already started, so I just need to give her a bit of a push on the back, one way or another. Yeah. Just that little, little push. Just a tiny bit. Ooh, new place. I continue to pass the time making idle conversation with Michiru, as per my everyday routine. We got off the monorail near the beach and then walked down the seaside path to our final destination. Hmm. Yes. Losing her sight had really sharpened her sense of intuition, as she sent the gate a few steps in front of us and stopped. She can let go of my hand anytime. Oh. Your class isn't the same way as mine, though. You have a very weird imagination there. We don't have a boat. I shook off her eager hand and pushed her on the back. Go on, get going. Michiru swung her parasol in front of her as she walked away reluctantly. What a handful! At first glance, you would think she's a mature, sensible young lady, but she was still a child at heart, complete with a child's sense of entitlement. I waited behind Michiru a little bit before walking through the gate myself. I didn't want to constantly have her sticking to me like glue. Hmm? Huh? I suddenly ran to Mew! Yo, good morning! What a coincidence running into you here. Though maybe we walked by each other without noticing it before. Why are you shouting? Mew spoke as timidly as ever. Compared to yesterday, it seemed like she had reverted to being constantly on guard with others overnight. Why are we talking about weather? You don't have to force yourself to talk about something, it's fine. She must have remembered me telling her not to apologize so much. After thanking me, she finally relaxed her shoulders and gave me a bashful smile. I didn't expect to run into you. Maybe we should wait until later to talk about you know who, alright? Who's that? Who are you? Are you sisters? Maybe? Suddenly another first year student of short stature appeared next to Mew. You told her about yesterday? Oh, okay, well, that's fine. That's how secrets stop being secret, you know? Uh, Mew's face drooped when I pointed that out, but regardless, I just gave a half-hearted smile to the other girl, Misaki. Me? That's very polite. I'm not fond of calling people by last name, so would you mind if I just called you Misaki? This girl seemed like this polar opposite of my sister. Steadfast, mature, and with a lovable smile. I had a bunch. I had a hunch her upbringing had affected that. Are you some kind of rich heiress or something? Oh. Hey, hey, huh. Zaki acknowledged it without hesitation. Oh, I... I didn't know that. Oh, come to think of it, I've seen trucks around town with Ando written on them in English letters before. Is that the one? Oh, a large company, Harris, huh? Yes, you must be quite the rich girl. That reminds me, wasn't Ando the subcontractor that the city tapped for that contract to build the monorail? Oh. Crap. I didn't want people to know about my family, but I almost brought it up in conversation without thinking. Forget I said that. 
あのモノレールって沢渡さんが町のためにってお金を出して作られたんですよね No? Yeah, I guess so. I had to change the subject, but it didn't really work. I know. 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 レイ先輩のことだったんですね。Yeah. Seems like you two get along pretty swimmingly. Hearing Masaki's faint muttering of realization, Mew's eyes widened in amazement. レイ先輩って正真正銘の王子様なんだ。すごい。Wow, all our close friends and best friends are just like rich people. Oh. Wow. Nah, I wouldn't say I'm cool just because I'm from an affluent family. When <laughs> that Misaki girl is just really shocked. I initially thought it would be better to let the whole thing slide, but I ended up spilling the beans about me being Michiru's relative instead. I'm sure it would have gone out sooner or later anyway, though. Just please don't think any differently of me because of that. Ever since I was a kid, it's caused me no end of trouble. I sighed out dejectedly. People I thought were my friends would push me away, and even the teachers would treat me differently when they found out about my circumstances. Anyone would be bitter over that. Yeah, what? Yeah, that's, that's the issue. When, when someone's rich and, like, you know, they have a status in the society, people just treat them differently. It's, it's like, like, oh man, I gotta show respect, but I'm not gonna show respect to anyone else. That, yeah, that's just, that's stupid. You gotta, you gotta respect everybody equally. Yeah. As if she figured out one of my weaknesses, Mew gave a slightly suspect looking smile. Yeah, maybe a Sawatari, but I'm still my own person. <laughs> Thank you. I was really grateful for Mew's understanding, but Miss Argy hadn't said anything yet. That reaction was something I was more accustomed to. What's eating her anyway? If she had a sense of pride in her own family name, maybe she saw me as a rival or something. If the Sawatari family didn't have the stature they did, Misaki probably would be a th thoroughbred princess. Well, I'm out. See ya. There's nothing left to say, <laughs> so it was probably wise to get the hell out of Dodge. Good grief. Even if I'm used to it by now, it's still ungodly awkward when my family comes up in conversation. Misaki's like, uh, what do I do? What do I say? How do I respond to him? He's the rich person. Well, I'm sure getting an earful of Shuji's acid tongue will set me at ease. I came into the classroom, put down my bag, and went over to talk to Shuji. Nah, I was just hoping to hear a bit of your fuck you, I do what I want attitude. Like how? You'd only get like 15 seconds or two before I'd have to slug you. Putting that aside, I heard you lent on an umbrella to that girl you were talking to yesterday. For some reason, he looked puzzled. There still weren't very many people in the classroom, but I lowered my voice anyway to be safe. Hey, her name's Mew Suzuki, and she told me she fell for you when you let her borrow an umbrella one day. He forgot. <laughs> He's like, he doesn't even know he had an umbrella. He like forgot about it too. I feel there's something you're not telling me. Oh. Hey, were you just trying to be a show off, helping out a cute girl caught in the rain? Oh my gosh. This guy. Seriously though, one of these days, that big mouth is going to get you knifed in the back. To be honest, I mentally conceded that he had a point, but I would never dare say that to his face. Yes, sir. Even if it was just lending her an umbrella, I guess that's love at first sight for you. I know, right? Nonetheless, I couldn't help but grin. 
Must be nice. You're gonna have a girlfriend before me. Suji hesitated as if he wasn't sure what to say next. It was surprising to see Suji, of all people, act like that. What's eating you? Huh? What, are you gonna turn down a cute girl's confession, or do you actually have a girlfriend I don't know about? Suji furrowed his brown in thought. Though I thought this wasn't anything to worry about. Then he spoke again. Huh. Although you think you're helping, Shuji immediately left the classroom after that. He seems to be giving me the cold shoulder. I was left dumbfounded in the classroom. Wait. I hadn't been prepared for this. Shuji would react positively. I tell Mew the news at lunch break and then bada bing, they live happily ever after. That's how things would go. Or so I thought. Did I now have to declare Mew's crush as just an idea that wouldn't get on the runway? That it was more like an idea that blew up in the hangar? What the hell do I do now? I buried my face in my hands. It would be different if Shuji had a girlfriend, but that doesn't seem to be the case. He didn't even explain why he's not interested in her. I decided to get up and follow Shuji to see if I could coax any more info out of him, but... Oh. Hi. Whoops. In spite of my haste, as soon as a cute girl said hello to me, I had to stop and return the greeting. <laughs> Good morning, Makoto. Dora had a casual smirk on her face, like she was in a good mood. I thought she would just say hello and go about her business, but she was still standing in front of me. What's up? Yeah, give me what? What? Hmm. I'm a little confused as to why why they like put their hands around their boobs like that and just kind of like do girls do that? But they have if they have big boobs, I mean, I, I would assume it would be uncomfortable. Right? He handed me a small wrap box. Opening it, I found it contained a large eraser, along with some cutesy post-it notes whose designs were un unabashedly girly in appearance. He gave me a box with erasers. With erasers? Okay, that's fine. It really wasn't a big deal though. This is awfully diligent of you. Oh. Makoto never stood out to me before, but in a real conversation with her, I couldn't help but notice she was a bit more old-fashioned than most girls. Is it her manner of speaking? Huh? I don't know, I just have a feeling. Haven't I met you somewhere before? Who even says it has a pickup line anymore? I'm asking a serious question here. I don't think so. We probably didn't even go to the same school before coming here. Why does that have to be a mortal enemy? Maybe you could just call it fate. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks a lot for the gift. Kota gave me a dazzling smile. She returned to go back to her seat. Now what was I doing again? Right, I was trying to go after Suji. I always packed the people of them, hanging around and chatting. I wonder why anyone to overhear something like this, so it might be hard to grow Suji anymore until after school. I scratch my cheek. Poor guy with such a big mouth. He sure can be a mule sometimes. Suji says whatever he feels like most of the time, but if he decides he doesn't want to talk about something, he really bonds his lip. Man, Suji really is a good chap. Huh. Interesting. Then, it was time for lunch. Well anyways, I'm going to end the episode here everybody. Huh, it's very complicated now. I thought Shuji was gonna go for Mew, but then, then, you know, he doesn't know. So, maybe that's what in the beginning of the game, where we kind of, uh, you know, really thought about, well, like, you know, the whole, whole uh, situation with the Mew kind of waiting for my response thing. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure now. I'm very confused. Am I supposed to help Shuji out? Am, am I supposed to help Mew out somehow? Or am I supposed to confess to Mew? I do not know. 
And the whole situation with my sister. Now that's a weird thing. I, I have no idea. Oh, and then Makoto. Whew. So I'm... Are there... Okay, so I'm trying to think of the routes. Are there... So... I don't know if there's going to be a route for my sister Machiru. That's a... That's a thing that I hope it's not. But I'm pretty sure it might be a route. That's one. Uh, two would be Mew. Three would be Makoto. And four would be Kronos. Somehow. Um, we don't know any other girls. But those are the only routes that I know of. So four. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Chrono Clock. If you guys did, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you, everybody, for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!